Amen. Amen. Stand with me today. Amen. Psalms 150 says, Praise you, the Lord. Yeah. Praise God in the sanctuary and the firmament for his, of his power. Thank you. Yeah. Praise him for his mighty acts. Yeah. Praise him according to his Glory. excellent greatness. Glory. Now listen to the last verse. Let everything that has breath yes. praise the Lord. Yes. Praise ye yes. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we love you today. We're yes. thankful for this good word. We ask your anointing and covering and blessing and presence and power into this service. Uh, cause the worship to be anointed. Cause the word to be in our spirit. Glorify the Lord and the Savior. In Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
foundation. Yeah. You stand. Hallelujah. Whatever comes your way, whatever you face in life, you will stand if He's your foundation. Amen. Hallelujah. We have much to pray about tonight or this morning. Remember, Dina. We keep wanting to call her Deanna, but it's Dina. Dina came through her surgery. Thank you. It was a radical surgery. And uh, so I know recovery is going to be very difficult for her. Yes. So remember her if you would. Yeah. Also, how many remember Ray Northern? Yeah. yeah. Amen. So the Ray will be having knee surgery, mm -hmm. knee replacement surgery this coming Friday. Oh, so yes. keep them in your prayers yeah. if you would. Amen. Uh, remember Diana this morning. We have several yes. that need a touch yes. this morning. Yes. Thank you, you have a need this morning you want to share with us? Again, Janessa. It's hard to. Yes. Damn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You raised your hand, sis? Oh. Yes. I have surgery on the 27th. Surgery on the 27th. All right. Got it. Got it. Able. Eye surgery, you said? Okay. Eye surgery. Amen. Tammy's had eye surgery. Eye surgery. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's able. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Move on Tuesday. All right. Amen. That seems to be something we're hearing every week. You're not going far, are you? I don't know. Just down the street. I'm about to say this. Lord Jesus. I'll be closer to Sister Gladys. Okay. We'll be praying for Sister Gladys. <laughs> Anybody else? Amen. Brother Chuck, would you stand this morning and just take it to the Lord of prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to your mighty throne in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Look upon all these prayer requests, Father God, the surgery on your servants, Lord, on Brother Northern and his knee, and the sister on her eyes, Father God. Oh, those that are going to be moving, Father God, give them strength. Oh, and give them some wisdom, Father God, that they come back whole. Lord, we ask that you touch our unsaved loved ones, wherever they may be. Open their blinded eyes, unstop their deaf ears, and show yourself real to them like you never had before, Father God. Send people their way to plant that seed, and send people their way to water that seed and you Amen. give the increase Lord. Amen. Touch our relationships yes. bind them together in yes, strong core that is not easily divided Father God. When that devil comes like a flood oh Lord that you build that standard against it Lord give this, give the leaders of this country wisdom Father God yes. and give leaders of this church wisdom yes. to lead your church and to lead your people Father God. Yes. Oh touch our senators and our president Lord. Touch our congressmen and assemblymen Touch our governors, Lord. Oh, give them a revival that they never had or felt before, Father God. Lead us, guide us, and direct our paths for the calling you put on every one of our hearts. And we'll give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ushers, would you come? Help us this morning. Would you pray over the suffering? Father, we're in awe of your presence and we thank you, Lord, for all that you have provided for yes. each and every one of us. Yes. We thank you, O oh Lord, for every breath that you give us. Yes. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the roof over our heads and a place to come and worship you, Lord. Amen. We ask your fresh blessing upon all in this congregation. And we pray it now in Jesus' name. Draw me close to you.
In fact, when does our kids go back to school? It's coming up all right. Tell Darren's kids, come on up. Tyler, where you go? There you are, Tyler. Come on up. Gotcha, <laughs> Grandma, Grandma, you get to go and pray for him, too. Help us in there if you wish. Hallelujah. We need to pray God just build a hedge around our kids. Yes. Amen. Keep them safe. Yes. Yes, Lord. If, if, Robert, come on up, buddy. Uh, Abby, where's Abby? Well, when I say our kids, you're our kids. Come on up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a tough this is a very tough time for our kids. So it's, if you think it's hard for your adults, how many's having a hard time, adults? Sure, this is a tough time. It's, it's very hard for our kids. We want to pray that God would just keep his hand upon them, keep them safe. Amen. We don't know what the school year is going to hold. Yeah. Right now, I think they're trying to open it back up. Oh, yeah. But we don't know if they keep it open. Yeah. Uh, there are several schools that have opened and now are finding they're having some problems. But uh, God is a problem solver. Amen. 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 So let's just pray. We just stretch your hands this way. Yeah. Let's pray for our kids. Yeah. Hallelujah. Father, we just ask God right now a special touch. God, keep your hand upon our kids. Father, you know tomorrow as well as you know yesterday. Father, you know everything we're facing. You know everything they're going to face. The hardships, the trials, the victories they're going to have. Father, we claim victory this year. Uh, God, that you keep your hand upon them, that their learning would not be inhibited. God, that their routines would not be inhibited. Strengthen them for the so-called new normal. Father, be with them, God. Supply every need. Father, right now in Jesus' name, every need. Fathers, we lay hands on them and we anoint them this morning. God, supply every need. Hallelujah. Open up new doors, new avenues. Father, in Jesus' name. We God, give our parents the wisdom. God, as they deal with this situation. Father, those that are leaving us this next week, Father, we pray for moms and dads and grandparents that are having to say goodbye for the year. God, that you would just strengthen the homes and the families. Father, we know that you're, it's your desire to build strong families. Father, I pray strengthen every family in this room this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. These are honor roll kids. I can tell you that right now. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, kids. Amen. I'd love to come down and hug you, but they won't let me. They got me in my face. love them to pieces. We won't recognize them next summer when they come up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I looked out this up the other day and I saw Joe and I said, who is that young man <laughs> standing by Mama? <laughs> and, uh, he's taller than she is now. <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to introduce a new song to you this morning. It is just a little simple song. <clears throat> that touched my heart this week. I was listening to some music and praying for our people. God just draw. Provide. 
Hallelujah. These are some mixed up times. But God, God knows tomorrow as well as He knows yesterday. Amen. He's got it all planned out. Amen. So we don't have to worry about it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Sing it with us.
Praise the Lord. God's a good God, isn't He? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'd like to make all of our announcements do the same as last week. So that covers it. Yeah. <laughs> Please pick up a bulletin because they're pretty. Amen. There's not a lot of information because they've got us cut way back. And, uh, I do want to tell you, just continue to pray for our country. Amen. And uh, I believe that God is still in charge. Uh, a lot of people in Washington think they are. Or Carson City or Sacramento or wherever they're at, they think they're in charge. But in reality, God's in charge. And, uh, but pray for our upcoming election. I think that it's about to get... Uh, uh, I was going to say dirty, but somebody said hot. We use that word. Uh, I believe it's going to heat up. It's intense. And I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. If you want to know who I'm going to vote for, ask me later. And I'd be glad to tell you. And I want to tell you something. If you, if you vote, vote the Bible. Amen. Amen. And uh, i got to tell you, there's not a perfect candidate running. That's true. Hello? Never, never there's happened. nobody perfect out there that I well that's running. There's some pretty close to perfect people. They have nothing to do with politics. <laughs> it's what makes them perfect. <laughs> but uh, keep our president in prayer. He's having to make some very tough decisions. And you know, it's easy to be an armchair quarterback. It's easy to put down the leader. I know what I'm talking about. It's easy to find fault with somebody who's in charge. Well, I wouldn't do it that way. Well, that's why you're not in charge. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, uh, be in prayer for me. Second Peter, Second Peter one and eighteen is going to be my jumping off verse, and then I'm going to be everywhere. Amen. These are the kind of sermons they tell you that you're not supposed to preach when you go through the homiletics class. Don't do this. So I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> If you're not there, look up. It's on the board. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with, him, were with him in that holy mountain. This voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mountain. He's talking about, and of course this is probably referring to Peter, or rather James, John, and who else? On, on the Mount of Transfiguration. Oh, Peter, James, and John. Thank you. That's what I said. This, it didn't hit this part right. Uh, you know, it came out like this. And then, anyways, uh, you, you remember the Transfiguration and uh, the voice came from heaven and God spoke to him and said, this voice we, which came from heaven we heard. You find several places in the Bible where there was a voice that was spoken from heaven, and and men of God and those around them heard the voice of God. I want to preach for just a few moments on that thought. This voice we heard. This voice we heard. How many want to hear from God? Amen. How many believe that God still talks? Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm going to be in Psalms 29 for much of my message this morning. Psalms 29, starting in probably verse 2. <laughs> Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now I'm just going to read the rest of it. So just follow me, Brother Chuck. Verse 3. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, that the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syria 
or a Syrian like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divided the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. Uh, the voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to, uh, to camp and discovereth the forest. And in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Those are some powerful scriptures if we can get the, if we can break them down to you. Father, we just ask God that you should open our hearts and every ear to hear this morning, God, to receive your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It seems like almost every day lately I'm talking to somebody that needs to hear God's voice. We need a word from God. How many times has somebody come up to me and said, Pastor, I need a word. Amen. And I got a bunch of them I want to give you. <laughs> but they, they need to hear God's voice and they, they want to know how can I, and they need to know how they can help, uh, God can help in their family situation. People ask, students of course ask, and others in career transition, Lord, are you really calling me to that particular thing? Are you calling me to that ministry? I need to know, God. I need to hear what your voice is telling me right now. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to, I don't want to do the wrong thing. So uh, making choices is something that we need God's, to hear God's voice and pastors and leaders uh, along with the other men and women in ministry in the, or even in the marketplace need vision. They need strategy for their church and other organizations. In the, in the challenges and opportunities and decisions of our life and our work, we need God's guidance and we need to sense His loving presence yeah. with us. Every decision we make, and decisions are not easy. Amen. You know, I wish a lot of times I didn't have to make a decision. But if i got to make a hard decision, I want to know that God has spoke to me. Amen. I want to and listen to me. i got to tell you, I don't always get it right. Thank you for not saying amen, at least. <laughs> but the voice of God is powerful, it says. Amen. The voice of God is full of majesty, we read to you. The, the psalmist wrote some 4,000 years ago. Well, does God have a voice? Have you ever heard the voice of God? Amen. How many knew that it was the voice of God? Yeah. I would take a moment and say, what did you hear and how did you know that it was God's voice? But we don't have time for that this morning. And I'm probably going to explain some of that anyway. God did speak many, many times. In Bible times He spoke. Uh, if you read your Bible, I'm sure it seems like God spoke and, he, and He's still speaking today. But I want to answer that question today. Have you ever felt like God was trying to tell you something? Mm. Have you ever felt like, God, I know you're trying to tell me something. I just can't figure it out. I don't know what God's telling me. And I'll be the first one to tell you that there are times I'd say, it's okay to do that too. I just have to look and say, what? <laughs> then there are times I look and say, are you sure? <laughs> Sometimes I argue with him. Sometimes I say, can I get a second opinion? <laughs> Well, the question is, can I hear from God? Can you hear from God? Well, I've never been to Bible college. Why should I be? I've never been anointed to, to be a, a minister. How can I hear from God? God only speaks to certain people. I hope to deflate that erroneous idea this morning. I'll ask you that question. Who's eligible to hear from God? Who is eligible? Glad you asked me. The truth is, God speaks to all His children. Amen. Just look at what Jesus said in John 2, 27. My sheep. Are you part of the flock? Are you sheep? Amen. How many are sheep? I know you're sheep. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Well, I'll stop right there. Michael explained to me when I first came here, he said, sheep bite. You know how you know you. It's another thing I said about sheep. You know you how you know you got a good shepherd. He smells like sheep. <laughs> Hello. Uh -huh. 
I try to cover it up. <laughs> my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So everybody, if you're part of the flock this morning, you're eligible to hear from God. He said, my sheep hear my voice. Yes. Well, I... I <laughs> How do I hear from God? I'm glad you asked. I'll show that in just a moment. John 10, 30, uh, 3 and 4 says, The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out when he has brought them uh, out of all his own. He goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. You see, God wants to talk to you this morning. He want... <laughs> There are so many times I just want to talk to my mom or my dad. Mm -hmm. and, and they're not here. Mm -hmm. And AT&T doesn't have a line established yet in oh. heaven. You got to think about that on my mom. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Bible tell us about hearing God's voice? Romans 10, 17 says, So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God. Amen. Jeremiah 3, 33 and 3. Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things that, that you have not known. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation. <clears throat> Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> I didn't see that. God was going to tell me that. When it printed, it cut off half this. But it said, Behold, I sit at the door and knock. If any man... Hear. Hear. Hear my voice. That's the part that's cut off. Here's my voice and opens the door. I will come in to him and sup with him. I think that's what it said. I'm pretty sure that's what it said. If you want, if you hear his voice, he's standing at the door knocking. He said, if you'll open that door, I will come in and we will have fellowship. We'll have a dinner. We'll have a meal together. That's the ultimate fellowship. Is sitting down and having a fellowship meal. And of course, he's not just talking about eating food there. So if you've accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, you are his child and you are eligible to hear from God. John 1.12 says, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, Glory even to them that believe on his name. You are a son of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you've received him this morning. Amen. Which means he wants to speak to you personally. Amen. God wants to talk to you. There's no age dynamic here. Did you know he can speak to a young child? Yes. Amen. As well as, as an elder today. But here's the kicker. If you if even though God wants to talk to you, we're not always listening. Mm. Think That's about true. it. That's true. Hello? Yeah. We're not always listening. God's saying some things to us, and we've got a deaf ear to we're doing something else. We're busy. Now, you ever sit there and have a conversation with somebody, and all of a sudden, in the middle of it, you know? They say, what are you talking about? <clears throat> Don and I were talking the other day, about five minutes, ten minutes. All of a sudden she says, you never listen to me. And I thought, that's a strange place to start a conversation. <laughs> 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 okay. I'm, I'm to the point I have to exclude everybody out there because I don't know who I'm going to offend. <laughs> Tom, I wouldn't offend you if I didn't see something this morning, would I? Okay, good. I was talking to Tom the other day. He said he hadn't talked to his wife for 12 months. I said, well, why is that? He said, I didn't want to interrupt her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> we aren't listening. God wants to tell us something. If we, you ever tried to talk to somebody and they just wouldn't listen? Amen. Man, I tell you, you know, I had a, I had a dog that just wouldn't listen to me. Unless you hit them in the head with a stick or something, you know. Sometimes God has to hit us in the head with something to get our attention. He wants to tell us something. He wants to talk to you. He wants to commune with you. He wants to fellowship with you. But we're not listening. So many voices are crying in our world today, drowning out what God's trying to say. Everywhere you look, everywhere you you, you, you see, there's voices trying to drown out God. Uh, let me t tell you something. Uh, I was... <laughs> Things have changed so drastically in, in the church world. Amen. I'm not going to pick on the world's world, but I will tell you some things about the church world because that's what I'm in. Amen. Things have changed so much in the church world. I was I was watching a program the other day. Just I wanted if I you know if I didn't have to, if I didn't think I'd have to buy another, I'd, I'd hit the TV <laughs> or at least try to hit the guy on the TV. He was preaching up a storm where they had to. It was a mega, a mega money church, and he had steps that went down, and they, those steps were literally filled with money, and he was running across those money, because the doctrine in these churches are, you find somebody that is blessed, and you anoint them with money, and God's going to send you money. It's a pyramid scheme. It's a get rich scheme, and they were running across. He was preaching and running across uh, those steps all over that money. I thought, what a mockery. What a mockery. Somebody's going to give an account for that, my friend. Amen. Somebody's going to give an account. Listening the other day to someone that was talking about tithing and that the reason that Adam and Eve sinned was because they're tithing. They didn't tithe. Oh. <laughs> now, you know, any first year Bible college student will tell you, Oops, you missed that one. You know, you're not going to dig out some unknown meaning to fit your scenario. And so there's a lot of things going on, a lot of voices trying to pull us out their direction and, we, and, and trying to drown out God. But I believe that God's voice can still be heard today uh, by those who are listening carefully. God's mighty acts are still being seen by those who look attentively. God is still working miracles. God. God is still doing Amen. things. Amen. Amen. God is alive. Oh, thank Amen. the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Anybody here from Kentucky? Praise the Lord. Oh, good. Then I won't bother you and tell me the story. <laughs> you might remember the hearing the story about the small small Kentucky town that had two churches and a whiskey distillery. If you're from from Kentucky, you, you know they're noted for their distilleries. Now, members of both churches complained that the distillery gave the town a bad image. To make matters worse, the owner of the distillery was an atheist. They tried to shut down the place to no avail. Finally, one night, they decided to hold a joint prayer meeting and ask God to intervene. Lo and behold, as the prayer meeting was ending, a terrible electrical storm came up and to, to the delight of the church members, lightning struck the distillery and burned it to the ground. Fire, uh, fire insurance company came out and adjusters notified the owner that they wouldn't be covering the damages because it was an act of God. And their policy didn't cover acts of God. So the distillery owner sued all the church members claiming that they had conspired with God <laughs> to destroy his building. The church members vehemently denied those charges. The trial judge wisely and very just cleverly observed in saying this, I find one thing about this case very perplexing. We have a situation where the plaintiff, an atheist, is professing his belief in the power of prayer and the defendants, church members, are denying it. <laughs> I never did find out who won the case. I stopped at that part. <laughs> but the, God is still doing miracles. Yeah. He's still speaking. He's still telling people things. He's still talking to His church. 
He's yeah. still talking to his ministers. He's still talking to his teachers. He's still talking to moms and dads and how to raise a family. He's still uh, reaching out and grabbing hearts and speaking to hearts and challenging them uh, to know him. He's still moving today. We need to listen to God. So my question to you this morning, and I'm going to come back on a few moments on Psalms 29. But the question is, how does God speak to his people today? And I knew you were going to ask that, so I put some things down here. God speaks to us, first of all, through the Scripture. Amen. Bob said in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all Scriptures given are God-breathed. King James, given by the inspiration of God and profitable. For doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction and righteousness. Amen. That the man of God might be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. Oh, yeah. Don't start pointing your fingers and say, that's for the man. Mm -hmm. Now that's the generic gender there. For you and I, God wants you to be, He wants to supply you with everything that you need. Amen. God still speaks through His Word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we like that second part. Everybody wants to be perfect, thoroughly furnished. Amen. When it comes to the Word of God. How many of you know where your Bible is? I used to ask how many have a Bible. Amen. Now I ask how many know where it's at. Amen. Yeah, it's under the pile of laundry over there. Under the... <laughs> I'm moving quickly now. God speaks through gifted teachers. Aren't you glad for gifted teachers? Amen. Amen. Every time our pastors get up here, Pastor Chuck, by the way, Brother Chuck will be preaching tonight. Brother Hammond preaches much around here. And every time they get up here, and Sister Gladys, are you going to be on the agenda pretty soon? Okay. Write her down, babe. Every time they speak, every time they speak, they, they bless me with something. Amen. 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 But I gotta let you in on a little secret. Their source is the Bible. Amen. Romans 12 and 6, we have different gifts. According to the grace given to each of us, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. In accordance to your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. Amen. If it's encouraged, then give encouragement. Yes. If it's giving, then give generously. Praise if it's to lead, do it diligently. Yes. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Hmm. See, God blessed us. With, and He's gifted men and women to speak into our hearts. God speaks to us through difficult situations. Uh, I wonder how many really think that. How many's ever been through a difficult time? Amen. We often ask the questions, and Lord, when am I going to get out of this? Oh, well, what we should be asking is, God, what are we going to get out of this? Amen. Yes. Amen. The psalmist said in Psalms 119, 67, and 68, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Now, <laughs> you got to understand something. God's the one that did the inflicting here. He's the one that brought the affliction. For those of you who think none of this, you know, nothing physical happens to us. If it is, it's the devil. You, you give him way too much credit. Come on. Come on. Give him way too much credit. The psalmist was out of, out of his walk with God. And God said, I'm going to bring you back. God has a way of bringing you back. Amen. Yes. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, He does. Yes. You, you find out, if you haven't talked to God for a while, you'll find out He'll get you in a position where you've got nothing else to do but talk to Him. Amen. 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 I laid on my back for a year and a half. And I'm going to tell you something. I have a lot of time to talk to God. 
when I got off that bed and started getting back into the things that God wanted me to do, I had a whole lot to say because God did a lot of work while I was in that bed. He said, but before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I obey your word. You're good and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees or your laws. As a Christian, we often have difficulty going through hard situations. It seems we signed up for a gospel that gives us love, joy, peace, and etc., but not the one where we have to have tribulation in this world, according to John 16, 33. He said, you shall have tribulation in this world. We didn't sign up for that. We signed up for the good stuff. God, we want the joy, the peace, the love, the joy, and happiness. We don't want any of that hard stuff. The good news is that often in the difficult situation is when God can speak to you very clearly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes He has to get you down where you'll listen. Amen. That's our biggest problem is listening. He'll get us there. God never said that our life would be easy. We live on earth. We have difficult times, trials, tests. They're all a part of life. Got a news flash for you. Life isn't fair. Amen. Bad things happen to good people. Amen. The first thing we want to do when something bad happens to us, if we can't see around, uh, see what it is, we want to blame God for it. That's right. That's right. I'll give you some advice from a personal viewpoint. That doesn't work out too well. <laughs> you can blame God till the Cows come home. But all it's going to do is get the cows home. It's not going to change anything. When we become Christians, it didn't mean we're going to escape this world. That's right. A lot of people think, well, I'm going to get saved and boom, everything's going to be great. Man, I'm going to get a raise. I'm going to get a new house. I'm going to get a new wife. Wait, no, that's not right. I'm going to get a wife. I'm going to get a dog. Good. Everything's going to be great when I, I'm giving. I'm coming down to the altar this morning. I'm going to give my heart to the Lord, and I'm going to go out those doors, and everything's going to be wonderful. The reality is, you get come down to these altars, you get saved, you walk out those doors, and you might walk out to four flat tires, <laughs> or a. Stereo missing. Somebody didn't somebody have a purse stolen out last year before we got our cameras. Now we can watch them steal it. <laughs> James one says, verse two, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Oh wow. Consider, hey, this is fun. This is joy. When you face trials of any kind, and you're going to face many kinds of those trials, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. It gets you that, that you need to get you through what you're facing or what you're going to face. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now that portion of Scripture said we should count it all joy. When you fall into various trials. James knew this wasn't an easy thing to do. It's not something that comes naturally. It's not easy to rejoice when things are going tough. It's not easy to, re to rejoice when there's not no money in the bank account. It's not easy to rejoice when your mate is going through physical things and you can't help them. It's not easy to rejoice when your political favorite is lagging in the polls. I wish you wouldn't talk about that, preacher. Okay, thank you for asking. I won't. We want to complain and plead our rights. We don't want to humble ourselves and trust in God's working in our lives. James goes on to say, the testing of your faith produces patience. We need to be tested and tried to have patience. If you don't want to have patience, then neither will... You have any of the other things James talked about? He let he lets being perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Of course, we want all those items. Doesn't happen unless you're willing to be tested. 
Amen. Who doesn't want a perfect, complete, and lacking nothing life? When all these things are in our lives, then everything's fine. And that's what we want. Fourth thing this morning, real quickly, God speaks through the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's imperative, church, Amen. that we seek God Amen. for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, this is not a message on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I urge you to seek it. Amen. Earnestly contend for it. John 14, 26 tells us of the Holy Spirit. But the Comforter, there's Paracletos, several words for that, uh, but one of them is Advocate. Uh, I'm going to use that word. But the Advocate, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he'll teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. Amen. Now, an advocate, which Amen. is one of the words for prayer queen, an advocate is a person who comes to our aid or pleads our case before a judge. Advocates offer support, strength, and counsel to intercede when, we, when, when necessary. The Bible says that Jesus is our advocate for those who put their trust in Him. He's the one that comes alongside of us. And He pleads our case. And He says, I'm going to help you. I see what you're going through. I'm the one that can help you. I'm the one that can get you through this. When nobody else seems like they can help, when nobody else seems like they even care, you've got one dispatched by Christ to get you through it. For John 2 and 1, my little children, I'm writing these things that, that you might not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We have an advocate this morning. Amen. And his job Amen. is to come along beside you and help you. Yes. How many need his help? Amen. 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 <clears throat> Number five, God speaks through his creation. I I, I love I, I I've developed a new taste for photography. And Donna will tell you that she'd be the first to say I couldn't take a picture if it, my life depended on it. I can point the camera at you and cut your head off <laughs> ten foot in front of me. Or I can shake it and mess it up. It's blurry. But I got a new appreciation for photography. All these people posted, posting these beautiful sceneries on Facebook. And I said, how did they do that? How did they make that so beautiful? I even see people putting pictures of themselves on Facebook and I say, how did they do that? I know them. <laughs> then I discovered something. They have filters, brother. They put them through a filter and I said, that's my daughter. Don't tell her we won't go to watch this. But they put these filters on. I'm thinking about getting one for me, too. I'm going to get the Arnold Schwarzenegger filter. <laughs> See how that works. But life doesn't filter you. You look out and you see what you see across the skies. That's beautiful. And God made it. Amen. His creation speaks to you. If you haven't heard, if you don't walk through the, through the forest someday and listen to the birds sing and listen to the water flow through the, the rivers and the creeks, then you haven't heard anything. You hear the wind whistling through the tops of the mountain. What an awesome thing. You know that God's there. I know some of you traveled, limited but the summer travel, went to different places and saw some beautiful things. You know, I keep seeing people posting these pictures of every place they've been on vacation and all I've been to is Walmart. <laughs> the heavens declare the glory of God the skies proclaim his, the work of his hands day after day they pour forth speech night after night they, are revealed, they reveal knowledge now God now the last thing I want to share with you and this is just my introduction God speaks through whatever or whomever he chooses. But never in disagreement with this. There are times when someone will come up and share a word with you. Can I give you a little advice? Not every time somebody says, I got a word for you, is one you need to listen to. Amen. That's right. 
and you need to verify. Who was it that said trust yet verify? Reagan. Reagan. I, I knew that, but I forgot it. I caught his disease. No. Job 33, 14. God, for God does speak. Now one way, now another. Though no one perceives it. God does speak. Amen. One way or another, God will speak. But I want to tell you something. It always lines up with this. Amen. If somebody gives you a word, go to this book and verify it. Amen. If somebody comes up to you and says, you know, God was speaking to me. And you know you've had some marital problems. God told me you need to just get rid of that mate. And I got a, I got somebody for you that you you tell them to take a walk. Because that's not scripture. Amen. If somebody comes to me and says, I know you're you know you're not you're not doing so well, just don't pay any tithes and God will provide for you. It's not in the book. And I'm not even preaching on tithes. If somebody comes up and says to you, "Well, you know, I want to tell you, I want to tell you some things about the pastor," oh, oh. might as well pick on him this morning. I want to tell you some things about that pastor. You know what? Be very careful. Yes. Be very careful about entertaining those kind of Amen. thoughts. Because I'm going to tell you something. Your pastor's going to, going to make mistakes. If you follow this guy around long enough, you're going to find out he's going to make some mistakes. You don't believe me? Ask Donna. <laughs> Even to ourselves. They said the voice we heard. Now, in five minutes, I want to conclude this. I really want to. I shared it with Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call to me and I will answer. I tell you great and unsearchable things that you don't know. You don't know. God is not reluctant to speak to us. If we need to hear from Him and can be trusted to make good use of that message that he's given you. He's not going to tell you something if you're not going to use it wisely. Amen. He's not going to share unsearchable things with you if you're going to use it unwisely. That's why the Bible begins the creation kind of Genesis with this refrain. And God said. So how can I hear from God? Real easy. By positioning yourself to hear from him. Some people, how many have I not offended this morning? That's my new motto. I don't know who I haven't offended. Because get ready, here it comes. <laughs> Some people seem to have a direct link to heaven. I hear people say this all the time. God told me this. God told me that. I, God was talking to me the other day. I was in my, I was, I was walking around the house, doing laundry. God just spoke to me. I started saying, well, did he tell you to do the dishes too? <laughs> Some people just seem to have, to have a direct link to God. I, I don't have a direct link. I've got to be in a position to hear from God. Well, there are times when I'm, uh, the other morning, uh, in, in particular, God just began to speak to my heart. Now, it wasn't an audible voice, but God just began to speak to my heart, and I began to write down what he was telling me. I like to do that because I don't have that great of a memory. I got a real good memory. It's just not very long, but so I'll write it down. Amen. Amen. But, it, it, you know, it's like an everyday thing with some people, but it doesn't always happen to me. Perhaps you can relate to that. You'd be thrilled to hear from heaven, wouldn't you? Amen. Some of you haven't heard in so long, you'd be thrilled to hear a word from God. <laughs> Get there. Or perhaps you've tried and have grown frustrated in the efforts. I believe, personally, I believe that you have to position yourself 
to hear God speak. Amen. Now most of you know this, but I, I have hearing loss in my right ear. I'm blind in the left eye and I can't hear out of the right ear. But I'm whole if I'm all put together. I went to the doctor and he was testing my hearing. He said, have you ever had any loud noises in the right side of your, your, your body? I said, absolutely, that's the side Donna writes on. <laughs> she knows I'm going to make it up to her. Don't be so worried for me. But when, I, when I'm listening, I have to kind of turn a certain way to hear. When I'm looking at something, I've, I've told you some of the kids especially, don't come up on my left side because that can be dangerous because I can't see you. So if I want to see something, I have to turn around and look. You say, why can you drive? I don't know why they let you drive, but this, you can't. I got a license. They said I can drive. I can drive a big rig if I want to. I wouldn't advise getting to my left side if you're there. <laughs> come around on my right side. But I have to position myself to hear. I have to position myself to hear something from God. You have to, if you want to hear from God, there's things you have to do. A lot of people think He just shows up on the television, and you know, boom, I'm watching uh, Oral Roberts, uh, and He got a word for me, boom, boom, boom. No, it doesn't work that way. Amen. Let me tell you how you get a word from God. First of all, immerse yourself in the Word of God. Amen. Bury yourself in this book. Let me let you. Uh, in a little secret. God's spoken word, the Greek rhema, is a lot like his written word, the logos. They're very, very similar. So the more you familiarize yourself with the written word, the more you're going to be able to hear and understand when he does speak to you. The more, the more time you spend in the Bible, the easier it is to recognize his voice. His spoken word will never contradict his written word. Understand that. You can be assured that whatever you're hearing is really His voice because the Holy Spirit will never contradict God's Word. Along with that, God knows you're serious yeah. about what you're doing, about hearing from Him. So pursue His Word. Secondly, make prayer a regular routine. Amen. And even better than that, make it, if you can, at least with one other person. Let me tell you why I say that. The Bible says in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Amen. That doesn't mean just in a church setting. But if you're praying, if you've got a prayer partner, you know, Donna and I are prayer partners, but when two are gathered together, he's right there in the midst. Oh, yeah. So make it a habit to pray with someone. And uh, you'll find that when you pray, uh, you'll find uh, as you're with your prayer partner, um, God will lead you in your prayers. He will connect can connect the same thoughts and different people. We'll be praying and all of a sudden God will share something with Donna that she shares with me. And I wasn't going that direction. But God would speak to her. Or God will confirm something. There's things we prayed about. God, we need, we need to answer and we get a confirmation. God will confirm it to us. Thirdly, real quickly, you need to fast. You want to hear from God? Fast. Amen. It doesn't mean praying real fast or quick. But it means abstaining. Well, why do you fast? Glad you asked. To crucify the flesh. By fasting, it makes the spirit more sensitive. Yeah. And remember, God is spirit, and only, only a spirit can connect or communicate with another spirit. So we need to be sensitive. The book of Acts, in the, uh, and we see the apostles fasting to help them receive God's guidance. Uh, when we fast from food, we make a space of time and activate our senses for attending to God's presence and voice. When you're fasting, that doesn't mean just, well, I'm not going to eat, I'm going to go down and watch ball game. No, the reason you lend yourself to fasting is so you can pray. Fasting and prayer Amen. goes together. Uh, fast for different things. And, and fasting has become a fad anymore. Now there are medical diets Dealing with fasting. That's not why you're fasting. You're not fasting to lose weight. Amen. You're fasting to hear from God. Yeah. 
begin your time of seeking God with worship and praise. That's simply, that could be simply calling out a few sentences, describing the attributes of God, let him know. Like, well, like Psalms 29 and 2 says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Physically positioning yourself in humbleness will help you as well. I got five minutes left. How many will give me an extra five? Okay, that's 35 extra minutes. That's all I need. No, I'm, I'm, I'm closing. But you need to hear the voice of God today. Yeah. He has a voice of healing. Yeah. As a, you remember the story, man by the pool of Bethesda hadn't walked in years. Once a year, an angel would come down and stir up the water. And if you could get in the water, you would get the healing virtue that was in the water. There was a man there, crippled, couldn't walk, laying on a bed. As he was laying there, the, eight, the angel began to stir the water. And Jesus, looking at him, why aren't, why aren't you in the water? He said, I don't have anybody to help me. Jesus looked at him and said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately, the man was made whole. We need the voice of his healing. Jesus is saying, rise up. Rise up above your circumstances. Don't let your circumstances, and I don't have time to go into all this, don't let your circumstances keep you down. Amen. Get up above them. How many like feathers beds? How many like those? Nobody? Wow. How many like temper meetings? How many even have a bed? <laughs> Sleep number? You know what they say about feather beds? They're great as long as you stay on top of them. If you get one on top of you, you're in trouble. That's the way it is with problems in life. you got to rise up above them. you got to stay on top of them. He, he also had the voice of peace, comfort. Remember the story of Jesus and Mark told the disciples to go to the other side. He got in the boat with them. Went down to the hinder part of the boat, went to sleep. All of a sudden, this ferocious storm blew up, and they were, the waves were coming over the sides of the boat. Somebody got the idea. I wouldn't have done this, but they did. Somebody wake up Jesus. Go tell, go wake him up. And they even had the nerve, Master, don't you even care about us? We're, we're, they don't realize something. Jesus was in the boat with them. If the boat went down, he was going down. I mean, think about it. It wasn't going to happen, but they had the audacity to say, don't you even care about us? You ever done that? God, don't you care about me? Look what I'm going through. Look what's happening to me. Jesus looked up, looked down. First of all, said, why are you so afraid? How is it that you don't have any faith? And he spoke to the winds and the water, and they said these words, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Right. He has a voice that brings peace to your situation. Amen. He has a voice that brings deliverance. You, Remember the story, and just briefly going through it, there was a demonic in Gadaria that had in the tombs that lived there. Had a legion of demons. They couldn't. They bound him with chains. They couldn't keep him bound. Did everything they could. He was. He was out of his mind. And he had a thousand, or better, a, a better than a thousand demons in him. And Jesus came upon him. And he talked to him. The man said, "Why are you come to torment us before our time?" Oh, wow. Jesus said, "I'm going to cast the demons out of you. You better get." I hope you brought your A game because there's a lot of us in here. I'm paraphrasing. I'm sure it's in some kind of version today. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of us in here. 
And he began to communicate with them. And the demons began to say, don't just let me go out into the country. Let me go into the, there was a herd of swine close by. He said, let me go into those. And I don't know why, I've often thought why that happened and they didn't like bacon or what the deal was. <laughs> but he, uh, he did that. He cast the demons out and went into the swine. Swine ran off the cliff, drowned themselves in the sea. A little bit later, they came to see Jesus, see the one that was possessed with the devil and had the legion. They saw him sitting and clothed and in his right mind. They saw him sitting and clothed and in his right mind. He brought deliverance. You see, God still has a voice that can bring deliverance to your, oh, hallelujah. your life. He brings victory. And I'm going to close. I'm to come up to the piano. He has a voice of victory. Story in Samuel 17 that talks about David and Goliath. David was... How many has been down on 4th Street over here to... Uh, The Sands. If you driven by 4th Street, when you leave today, drive by 4th Street and the Sands, you'll see a big guy there in a armor. How many have seen that? It's Art. That's not his name. That's what it is. <laughs> what is it? A samurai. He's a big dude. That's kind of how I envision. Goliath, little David, the runt of the group, can't come upon the scene and said, what's the meaning of this uncircumcised village? He saw, he saw his whole nation cowering behind rocks in this valley. So what is going on here? So they began to talk and David wanted to go to battle with him. Saul said, okay, but here, first of all, let me give you this, let me give you my armor. David strapped him on and almost fell over. It was so big. He laid him down, he reached down to the creek in the valley, picked up five smooth stone, because he had already tried his slingshot on lions, black bears, and he'd been able to take them down. And as he went out to battle, Goliath mocked him. So you're sending a kid out to fight me with sticks? He said, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna destroy him. I'll kill him. David says, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you with the name of the Lord. God is going to give you into my hands today. This day will the hand of God give you over to me. And as the Philistine moved closer to attack David, David ran quickly toward the battle and meeting. He didn't run away. He ran quickly towards it. He took a slave, one stone. And I don't know how many times he went around, but he went around and around. When he let go of that rock, that sling, it was dead eye right on target, right between his eyes. And down he went. One blow from God. Friend, that's victory. That's victory. He went on the Word of God. The Word of God, he said, today. Now, some of you don't want to hear from God. I, I go ahead and say it. Some of you don't want to hear from God. I know that. Because some of his words are words of rebuke. Somebody say, I don't want to hear from God. I don't like what he says. Oh, I have a gentleman in the Bible said, isn't there a man of God we can hear from? He goes, well, yeah, there's this prophet. Well, I don't want to hear from him. He never prophesies anything good to me. <laughs> Do you really want to hear from God or and ask yourself this question? Am I afraid of what he might be saying? I'm afraid of what God's going to tell me to do. 
Maybe God's going to tell you to get back in church. Maybe God's going to tell you to stop playing around. Maybe God's going to say the time is drawing near. Maybe God's going to tell you something that's not your favorite. Amen. I want to challenge you this morning. They said this voice we heard. This voice we heard. Would you bow your heads with us? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.